Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here once again, and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos as to be expected. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Piglet's Big Game for the Game Boy Advance. So, last time we've actually completely done with every single portion in terms of Eeyore's Dream, and suffice to say, we've never actually come across into a talking door on this version right here. So, yeah, that seems all legitimate and stuff like that. So, today, for this video, is about the fact that we're about to be continuing things on throughout the game and experiencing the fourth dream in the game. That's what appears to be none other than Rabbit's Dream. So, I can assure to you, it might actually felt a bit much more lengthier than the other dreams for sure. So, either way, let's get to it, shall we? Rabbit fell asleep thinking of his carrots and how his friend Piglet would have surely helped him save them. Well, I'm sure we're able to get the gist of it. So either way, just like the console version of this particular dream, it obviously takes place in somewhat of a nature, like forest environment or somewhat. So because of this though, and somehow we've bumped into Tigger, just like the console version. And yeah, I was totally right after all, especially concerning about the fact that, well, unfortunately you can't play as Pooh in this version of the game. Well, because again, because of the handheld's limitation. So either way, before we continue things on, on the other hand, let me go ahead and grind for, or should I say, spend 40 cookies onto this next brave face. And it feels like that Piglet was having a sneeze or something, or allergic reaction for its hay fever or something like that, in terms of his face impression. Well, I don't know about you, because it does kind of remind me of that. So either way, so chances are though about the fact that I'm always able to double check on certain things. Now, I was originally trying to able to spend on that particular brave face over there, as you saw, but I think I should probably do that later, because for now, much like the forms of how it does it on the console version, that we need to able to to put those cock wheels into its uh, little, uh, con uh, I don't know what you call it per se, because I know for a fact it's been about uh, two days ago since we've actually last uh, played this, especially concerning about the fact that obviously Tiana, that she's now able to actually, well, she obviously finished up the actual main story mode in terms of uh, Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe so far, but obviously she's still got a ton more stuff to do, especially concerning with the forms of, you know, uh, that particular version of the game has gym pack full of content and all that stuff, but relatively speaking though, everything else will be pretty much encountered for, for the sake of the forms of how, um, you know, certain playthroughs turns out. So either way, so we bump into Ticker right here, so just to ensure that we will be able to know of, do you know, a way to cross the stream. So of course, we can able to take control of Ticker to find a raft. So I just saw a raft, which would do, do the trick, but I've got to be real quiet like, Health alarms are everywhere, so yeah, that's seemingly to say for this point. So, either way though, and I think suffice to say, this will be the final timetable to actually take control of Tigger in this game, because otherwise though, once we're done with that particular section, well, I think suffice to say that we are be we're about to be able to take control of Piglet the whole way through, through any forms of this entire world. So, either way, and uh... Yeah, it seems that we haven't got far left of it though, as far as for this game is concerned. Because obviously, once we're done with the forms of the majority of the forms of Piglet's big game on the Game Boy Advance, well, I think suffice to say that we're basically done with the entire... Well, I don't know about you, because again, it's been two days ago since I actually have last played this, because, well, today's day is of course the OSD 20th of April today, in this case in 2023 today, so there are quite a few things I would like to mention, especially, you know about the fact that ever since when uh, Tiana, she's already mentioned about something related to... Uh, the ND World presentation has already been came up ever since Indra New Forms have been yesterday. Well, suffice to say, I will admit though right away, actually I'll save that particular conversation until for later, because uh, there are some exciting stuff that's just happened, especially concerning in regards to the forms of the... Well, obviously tomorrow will be the actual release, for the sake of the forms of... Okay, I'm not exactly sure where the raft is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was wondering about the fact that I almost get confused and lost for a moment, but hey, at least I'm up on the right track, especially now we can able to go across the stream, so either way, so, yeah, everything else will be uh, all checked and done, so either way, 
Um, yeah, let's talk about the forms of how the fact that we're relatively speaking, though, that obviously tomorrow we're able to have Events Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp finally gets its release until tomorrow, so I'm sure that a lot of people will be very excited about this. And, oh, there's a key right there. Even though, surprisingly enough, though, I didn't seem to be able to actually get it at first. Well, that's just because about the fact that because of the actual cutscene did show up, or to be more specifically for this autopilot, um, segment when it comes to meeting up with Tigger and stuff like that. So, either way. So, yeah, everything else will be pretty much expected, especially noticeable how the fact that we have to still need to grind for more cookies. Especially noticeable because I could assure to you that until whenever we get to the final level in the game, known as, uh, Flooded Woods, basically, I get the strong sense of feeling the actual structure of that world coming up might felt a lot different compared to the forms of how it does it in the forms of in a console version. So, either way, but again, that's for discussion whenever we get to that world. So, either way, so, anyway, so for what I've noticed, it's about the fact that Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp actually brings us to certain, uh, reviews scores up. So, for instance, so far I've actually got about, uh, 8 review scores so far. So, relatively speaking, let's get started with the forms of Game Explain. And he did mention about the fact that he liked it a lot. Or liked a lot, as far as that particular rating board, as far as I'm concerned. Which is pretty good. And Eurogamer gives it a recommended, and so it applies to Polygon. And on top of that, with the forms of some very, very good scores here and there, between the forms of Shack News, Game Reactor, uh, Disjoint, I think is what it says anyway, and especially noticeable with the forms of Game Informer. So, I believe um, two of those reviews give it like um, 8 out of 10, and two of them are actually 8.5 out of 10. However, GameSpot to somehow receive 7 out of 10, which is okay, I guess, when it comes to that particular review score, especially compared to the forms of how it does it on any other reviewers are. Although I'm not exactly sure what IGN's reviewers are going to be, but I highly doubt about the fact that it's not going to give it a lower score, I hope not anyway. So, but either way, though, that might be um, a discussion and during that particular point. So... Oh, and on top of that, there's also very exciting stuff has just happened in regards to the forms of the Super Mario Bros. movie, you know, with the very most recent movie has ever came out on a big screen. And suffice to say, it's still doing really, really well in terms of the box office earnings. And because of that, though, they now on to $710 million. So it's almost getting closer to $1 billion. So it will be incredible if I do say so for myself. Especially concerning, it still looks really, really, really well. Well, in terms of the forms of how the fact that how the box office is going to turn out. Even especially noticeable, that will must say. That uh, Mario, along with uh, Puss in Boots himself, basically though, they pretty much dominated for box offices at this point in time. Well, at least I'll double check on the forms of the actual uh, current box office earnings so far in terms of 2023. Well, mind you about the fact that at the moment, the Super Mario Bros. movie is actually on the top number one at the moment. So, things will change until later on though, especially concerning about the fact I'm hoping that uh, Disney's live-action version of The Little Mermaid will not catch up, because otherwise, well, obviously it's got panned by fans and critics and stuff like that. I'm hoping so anyway, because let me tell you, the movie still sucks, especially concerning about the fact that, well, well, suffice to say, though, about the fact that, well, I just want to point things out right away, though, because of how the fact that at this point in time, I think I'm miles able to prefer, like, well, in terms of other discussions, I would like to point things out. I potentially no longer have myself not only Robin Hood, in this case, 1973 film, but it's also I no longer have myself, uh, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, alongside with Frozen 2, and especially noticeable with the forms of Encanto, which is a bit of a shame, honestly, because I would like to be able to give that film another chance, but it did turn out about the fact that well, as soon as I discovered that I also no longer have myself Lightyear movie on DVDs. Well, that's just because about the fact that I will admit though right away, modern Disney just felt kind of underwhelming now. Especially concerning about the fact that after that massive success of the films of Moana, specifically released in 2016, which I always attempt to enjoy, it seems that nowadays it just feels kind of all over the place, you know? Especially concerning about the fact that as far as what's, uh, 
some fans always seem able to realize they keep on doing uh, not only sequels and also reboots and especially noticeable with the forms of this very pointless life action adaptations and it's just it's just all over the place, you know? And on top of all that stuff, that was about the fact that that's the reason why. I prefer going back to the classic Disney films instead of the modern ones because it just feels kind of similar to the films of how it does it in the Mario Party games back in the day. Especially concerning that how most people prefer classic Mario Parties, like Mario Parties 1 through 8, including DS as well. But then when Mario, uh, modern Mario Party games first introduced, specifically Mario Party 9, all the way up to the top 100, that basically though, it's nowhere near as, uh, you know, nowhere near as good as the forms of the classic ones, that's for sure. Well, don't get me wrong, I don't mind the forms of other games when it comes to Mario Party, but it's just that it never felt quite the same. But at least, thankfully, we've got Mario Party Superstars still. So, at the very least, though, it's about the fact that I'm curious to see uh, what's going to be up next in terms of Mario Party. Well, I'm pretty sure it might reveal something later down the road, specifically until next year in 2024. Because I think something tells me they always attempt to do Mario Party games, at least in console Mario Party games, at least specifically the modern ones, always attempt to able to go through re release by release within three years in each of these gaps. So because of that though, like for instance Mario Party 9 came out in 2012, which is now roughly 11 years old right now, and then in Mario Party 10 came out in 2015, and then in Super Mario Party came out in 2018, and in 2021, we've got Mario Party Superstars. So, either way, I could imagine if the next Mario Party game will be released until 2024. And maybe potentially the final release of the Nintendo Switch Mario Party game before they moved on to the next generation of console. In this case, to be more specifically, the ninth generation. But I don't know. But, uh, time will tell at this point, especially concerning we're still on 2023 right now. And we still have no idea what the next Mario game is going to be. At least we haven't exactly got a new Mario game for this year so far. Since Mario Plus Rapid Sparks of Hope. At least if you want to count the forms of DLC content for not only for the likes of the forms of Mario Plus Rapid Sparks of Hope. But also with the forms of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as well. But either way, that might be some consumption, so... Of course, we do need able to pick up something later down the road, especially concerning about the fact that this place is going to be huge. So, th yeah, this is the reason why it actually took me so long to able to actually just navigate for this particular point. And somehow we do need the shuffle, so we do need to find that someplace elsewhere. So, either way, though, that might be something as far as I can usually say at this point. So... But, at, at the very least though, time will tell, especially concerning about the fact that I'm not exactly sure of what the next Mario game is going to be. But I'm hoping that Miles are able to bring a Mario Baseball game or something like that. But again, I have no idea just yet. So either way, there goes our another Brave Face that we've just recently unlocked. So either way though, now we are basically sorted to able to take on the next talking door. To be more specifically, weirdly enough, in Rapid's Dream. Because again, there's no Tigger's Dream in this version, so it's just all about the forms of how the fact that, well, again, because of the handheld's limitations, so... Anyways, let's get into the forms of another discussion at this point today. That is about the fact that we actually finally get a chance to able to get ourselves a brand new trailer, along with the reveal of, you know, the another LEGO set. And this time, what appears to be buddy forms of LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog has now finally uh, gets himself the LEGO treatment, to be more specifically with those LEGO sets. Because the last time we actually heard something related to LEGO Sonic, was actually back in 2000 and I want to say 2015 or something like that when they first revealed um, Buddy Forms of no I think it was sometime in 2016 or something like that they obviously did manage to reveal um, Sonic the Hedgehog uh, Lego Dimensions kind of level since in 2016 to go alongside with the celebration of the 25th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog which I will say, that's actually pretty cool, despite I haven't exactly got LEGO Dimensions on either the Wii U or the uh, any other, like, platforms for that matter. But that's just because about the fact that I have a bit of a struggle choice between these uh, different platforms as far as, you know, whatever version I was going to be playing as far as, 
Lego dimensions as far as I'm concerned. Although, relatively speaking though, it does bring some pretty cool stuff on that particular point, so... And I think something tells me about the fact that as soon as we're able to go to this room right here, then obviously... Oh god, I honestly forgot about that particular basic wall right there, so... Either way, so yeah, in terms of the forms of the LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog, as far as this is concerned, uh, they've shown us the forms of the first four sets they were able to actually bring us something to the table. Like, for instance, that they're, they're gonna be bringing in... Well, actually, technically speaking, there was actually five sets. Uh, I think I somewhat miscount on that, because I honestly did not pay attention to those specific details and all that stuff, but either way, at least I somehow managed to encounter it for, as far as I'm aware. So basically, they've shown us uh, Sonic's sphere, um, speed sphere, and uh, it's going to be one of those uh, mechanical uh, things, I guess, despite the fact that uh, it's been a quite a few hours ago since I actually have last seen that particular, you know, announcement trailer for the likes of the forms of LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog when it comes to LEGO sets. So, either way, though, and uh, one thing I do really... Uh, do appreciate about that is that Sonic keeps on breaking the fourth wall right onto the forms of that narrator and stuff like that, which I will say it is quite charming to say the least. And uh, anyways, let's get back into the forms of that specific sets they somehow well revealed. So I've already mentioned about this earlier, but the first set we've got is it appears to be body forms of Sonic's Speed Sphere, and the next one being Tails' Workshop, and next up we have is Tornado Plane. And there's also Amy's Animal Rescue Island. And finally, of course, Green Hill Zone, the most iconic place in terms of Sonic the Hedgehog's gaming universe. So, it will be too surprised they're able to actually have that in there. And also, I just found out, it also shows us the release date for these LEGO sets combined. Uh, much like the forms of the next set of Mo uh, LEGO Super Mario sets coming up, um, the LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog sets is also going to be releasing until the beginning of August, specifically August the 1st in this year. So, gee, it feels like that Mario and Sonic are actually not going to give up anytime soon when it comes to competing for each other or something like that. So, yeah, that seems kind of uh, weird for, you know, release time schedules between these two things combined, so... So, anyway... Um, in terms of the forms of the box office top 10 list as for right now, that's uh, obviously Super Mario Bros. the movie, or should I say, the Super Mario Bros. movie is on top at the moment right now. In this case, you know, as I mentioned this before, that film is now on $710 million for its box office earnings, which is very, very good. Certainly a lot better than the forms of how it does on that terrible 1993 film for sure. Especially because, you know, the live-action movie got box office bombed, and also has a lot of negative reviews, including the forms of, um, you know, audiences included. So, and, uh, second place goes to Four River Red, and, um, also The Wandering Earth 2. I believe though both of those films are released in China, if I recall correctly, and same applies with the forms of the seventh spot, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, was in 4th place, despite the box office doesn't go too strong, as far as I'm aware. And, uh, John Wick Chapter 4 was on 5th place, and, um, Creed 3 was now on 6th place, and, uh, uh, Booney Bear's Guardian Code was on 7th place, and that film was also be released in China. And, uh, also we have, uh, Megan, I think it's what it says anyway? Um, was on 8th place, and ninth place goes to, uh, Scream 6, and finally for number 10, we have Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, so, yeah, I think that's as far as I can try to say about the actual box office ownings, as far as, you know, the actual thing itself, as far as I'm, are you kidding me? I almost first thought I was gonna able to place that particular plank of wood right there, I mean, surely that could have worked, right? Oh, don't tell me because the forms of the video game logic system, I guess, where it comes to like, well, we can't able to place that, I guess, or, I don't know, I might as well keep trying as soon as I keep on exploring around in Rapid Stream, most likely, so. But again, it's somewhat of a semi-blind for me because I've never actually experienced this version of my life, so bear with me for this point, guys. 
So for the time being, let's talk about the forms of certain announcements they bring us from the likes of the forms of the most recent ND World presentation. There's actually quite a few interesting announcements here and there, but unfortunately though about the fact that, as I mentioned this before, it might be felt a bit underwhelming to me, but I'll explain more details on that in a moment. So, the first game they did reveal, in terms of the forms of ND World Showcase, or ND World Presentation, that's what appears to be by the forms of Nainku's uh, Night Market, and yeah, that's something I guess, and that game is going to be releasing until the 26th of September in this year, so it's almost roughly about 5 months, so at least as far as I'm concerned. And the next game they did reveal, which appears to be My Time at Sandrock, and uh, that's going to be releasing at some point in this summer, so again, that's something. And next up we have is uh, Plate Up, which obviously that's going to be releasing until October this year, so I guess that's that, I guess. And uh, there's also uh, Quilts and Cats of uh, Kalako, I think that's what it says anyway. And that's been going to be releasing until this autumn this year, so I guess that's that. And of course, about the fact that there's also the let's just say a spin-off of any sorts of the already existed game back in like a couple of years ago, but this time what appears to be body forms of Rift of the Nuko, Nuko Dancer, I think that's what it says anyway, and that's going to be releasing at some point in this year, so... And there's also some DLC mentionings about the forms of only three titles here and there, like a little to the left, Cup, cup uh, cupboards and drawers DLC. That's something. And there's also going to be a DLC from the likes of the forms of Shuffle Knight Pocket Dungeon, and this time what appears to be a body forms of Puzzlers Pack DLC. So that's something. So that'll keep some uh, Shuffle Knight fans interested. And there's also body forms of uh, Cult of the Lamb, because I can totally see why that particular game is going to receive itself its DLC because it actually did pretty well for its uh, awards and stuff like that, but um, obviously they'll bring us into Relics of the Old Faith um, update, so that will be interesting, but I don't know exactly what the release date is going to be with those DLCs, mind you, so, and next up they revealed is Animal Well, and it's going to be releasing in this winter, so it could be either be December, January, or February, depending on the forms of 2024, so, either way. And there's also, uh, Crime or Clock, okay, I will admit though, that title of the game is quite intriguing, to say the least, but uh, I digress. And that game is going to be releasing until the 30th of June, so, again, that's something. And um, on top of that, there's also the forms of uh, uh, Tress Lagrid, uh, not only by the forms of its, uh, um, well, forget what I just said earlier, but uh, anyway, what I meant to say is that Tress Lagrid 2, alongside with the first game, but it's actually remastered, so I think that particular, those two games combined into one, just somehow managed to be able to release just recently, so... Yeah, I guess that's something, I guess. Uh, the next stuff they've shown us is the forms of Shadows over, uh, Lefren. I think that's what it says anyway. Now, as far as I'm aware, before I get to more details onto this though, because I think something tells me, yeah, you're supposed to face right straight towards it instead of towards the side. <sighs> God damn it, this particular death perception is quite weak. That's why I tend to prefer playing the console version over the handheld version, to me anyway. And something tells me we do need to shove this little uh, vegetable crate to that particular switch, because obviously while trying to stand on the switch, and then if you're trying to able to jump off the switch, obviously all closed off. So, pretty standard stuff, I guess. So, and also I just realized about the fact that with uh, that particular game, as I mentioned earlier, Shadows over Lithrian, uh, is also getting its, uh, kind of a similar treatment, 
as the Fallen Savara does in Metroid Prime Remastered, that basically, not only does it bring us the actual release date from the likes of the forms of the digital version, which obviously came out just recently, but out of nowhere, the physical version is later uh, released until autumn in this year, so... Yeah, I guess that's something, but again, it's very similar to a Metroid Prime Remastered for sure. And uh, next up they have is uh, Blasteranius, I think is what it says anyway, Blasteranius 2 uh, is going to be releasing and doing at some point in summer this year. And uh, also, if you don't know, know this already, but uh, yeah, that's what happens if you do manage to get scared by any other Heffalumps and Warsaws, you lose one of your... Um, courages and stuff like that. So, but again, if you lose all three of them, then I I think I suffice to say it might give you a game over or something. So, anyway, I guess that's that. Uh, next game they did reveal, which appears to be buddy forms of Arxan Free 2 Lost Signals, and I think uh, it shows us the release date for it, and it did say 12th of July of 2023 marks the exactly the same day as in not only the 10th anniversary of the release of Mo Luigi Dream Team uh, Brothers for its 10th anniversary of the game's release, but also with the forms of the UK version of Monsters University UK uh, 10th anniversary uh, release, as far as I'm aware. But again, we'll discuss on those in a later time though, because obviously about the fact that we're still in April after all, so either way, and straight to the point about the fact that we've only got about 22 more days to go, until The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is finally going to be releasing as well. So either way, it's actually pretty, it's actually getting pretty good so far. Uh, in terms of gaming releases, as far as I'm aware, during the forms have been 2023 so far. Well, apart from a couple of exceptions here and there, but uh, let's just say we're not going to be able to just try to be hasty for ourselves for any time soon. So either way, there goes our another cock wheel just being inserted onto that particular instructor. And straight to the point, after when you're able to insert those cock wheels, the switch now appears. So meaning we can now able to activate that. So I think suffice to say that... Uh, yeah, this particular drink can sometimes feel a bit too much busy work, especially because about the fact that since then we've almost nearly at the end of the game, so I were not able to actually just do able to rush things uh, just a tad little bit. While trying to able to avoid those uh, not only heffalumps, but also with morsels as well, so either way, yeah, that's as far as I can try to discuss upon things, so... Um, anyway, uh, the next game they did reveal, and unfortunately this is going to be the last segment we can probably discuss upon in terms of ND World presentations, and that is that they've shown us a brief, I repeat, brief montage of any upcoming ND games as far as I'm aware. Like, for instance, um, as far as I'm aware, the first they well, the next game they did reveal, what I meant to say, that is about the fact that they've shown us Paper Trail, and uh, that particular game is going to be out until August this year, so yeah, I guess that's something, alright? And um, also there is a uh, Little Kitty Big City, okay, I will admit though, the art style looks pretty interesting to say the least. And I think, suffice to say, this is the only game so far they've shown us the forms of 2024 release. So, yeah, it might take a very long time to be able to actually develop this thing. And next up, they've shown us to ourselves a uh, chance, or I think it says chance, of Senara. I think it's what it says anyway. I apologize for that particular mispronunciation of that game's title, but either way, because I'm not very great when it comes to the forms of knowing ND stuff, unlike uh, Cuphead, alongside with Super Meat Boy, and especially noticeable with, of course, Minecraft. So, but I digress. Um, that game is going to be released until the 5th of September in this year, so yeah, I guess it's that. And I think we've only got three more games to go. And that's what appears to be by the forms of, well, let's just say this right now. They also mentioned something related to uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. And I think that game did came out just recently. So, uh, yeah, no commented from here because they can now finally play the game on a go. Oh, wait, there's actually uh, more to it than that because I somewhat missed out on the last game on there. But I'll discuss on that in a moment. Uh, next they mentioned is uh, Bro. 
Rotatu, I think is what it says anyway, and I think it's going to be releasing in doing, uh, let's just say, in this year. So, we're not exactly sure when though, exactly, but that's just because about the fact that I just have no idea of how do I able to actually explain about the forms of my, uh, you know, just guilty pleasure when it comes to checking out ND World itself, but then again, that'll be my, uh, massive rent on it until whenever I manage to able to mention the rest of the stuff, so... But I digress. So, um... Yeah, I think something tells me about the fact that, well, obviously not able to proceed to the forms of in uh, the next section, as you can tell. I think we do need to take out, they'll take out one of those head alarms, as far as we probably might recognize in any forms of sense in the console version of the game. So, relatively speaking, though, that might be a discussion in a moment once we do come across into one. So, anywho, so. Yeah, that's as far as I can usually think about this, as far as I'm usually trying to say things exponentially. But hey, we can now fill up the watering can. So now we've actually got water in the watering can. So now we can able to... I would say we're most able to... Actually, this is not the way we were supposed to go, because I think... Something tells me there is actually going to be a beanstalk around here. So hopefully we're able to... Trying to find that, so... Yeah, I guess that might be something, so... Anywho, though. So... Yeah, in the next game they did reveal, where it comes to the forms of the actual, uh... These little short brief, uh, moments notice. Uh, next thing they shown us is Escape Academy, the complete edition. Okay, that seems more likely a standard puzzle game of any sort, or puzzle solving game, as far as I'm aware. And I think that's going to be releasing until Autumn 2023, so it could be either be, uh, let's just say, September, or October, or November, depending on the forms of the timeline. So, anyway, so I guess that's that. And the final game they did revealed, in terms of the forms of ND World presentation, that's what appears to be body forms of Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. And I think that particular game is going to be releasing until 18th of August in 2023. So, that's it. That's all I can really say about this. Especially, for my final thoughts of the most recent ND Worlds, well, I'm sorry to say, but honestly, that particular presentation still once again disappoints me the most. Especially concerning about the fact that not only does it bring some unnecessary, a uh, larger amount of new games, but once again, they've never actually mentioned something more related to Hollow Knight Silk Song. And let me tell you, I can, do I can totally see why a lot of people are going to get really ticked off at this point, especially because we still have not heard anything about the game since the PlayStation 4 version and the PlayStation 5 version is now a thing, after all. So, either way, though, and for some reason, this particular Road Sweeper Heffalump is actually uh, in a different color. Like, almost first of all, he was going to be pink at first, but apparently he turns into green, apparently, so... I've honestly have no idea why he comes up with that particular um, odd color decision. So I've honestly have no idea what the heck is going on at this rate. So yeah, as far as I'm aware, I promised you guys about the fact that after I managed able to finally get a chance to recently watch ND World uh, recently, I might actually stop watching ND World presentations from now on because I think, suffice to say, it you know, brings us to, once again, a lot of disappointments and stuff like that. Well, concerning with that particular guilty pleasure of mine, for the sake of trying to able to see it at first glance. Well, despite the fact I'm not exactly hyped about anything at this point in time. Well, apart from the fact that we're relatively speaking of, that, as I mentioned this before, we've only just got about 20 more days to, or actually kind of thinking about it, I, uh miscalculated, unfortunately. Uh, what I meant to say is that we've, you know, got 22 days left until The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is finally going to be releasing on the Nintendo Switch. So that'll be the exciting part. That's the obvious thing. So either way, so yeah, let's just go ahead. Oh god, you won't fool me for that again, basic heffalump that you've obviously got in blue, as opposed to the forms of how it does it on the console version that you obviously purple. So... Yeah, it's kind of strange, They're able to actually have, uh, different color variations of certain, uh, enemies we do encounter, so... 
Alright, so we do need to once again solve this little switch puzzle right here. So we're just going to have to able to just put those vegetable baskets into its uh, switches right there until we're able to proceed. But uh, yeah, it feels like we're not doing too bad, despite the fact that I get cornered by several enemies quite a few times. So, and I think something tells me we need to solve the correct order for those switches, because as far as I'm aware, that uh, if we somehow manage to choose the wrong switch, I don't think that there's going to be any penalties if you manage to able to uh, choose the wrong liver switch. So obviously this goes first. Okay. Oh, wait a second. It resets. Okay, I totally get it right now. Because I keep thinking about the forms of one of those mini games in uh, Mario Party 7 called uh, Treasure Dome. So, either way though, there we go. We did at least manage to solve this. And somehow the conveyor belt, somehow it moves. But despite the fact that it's not usually animated. So, and much like the console version, basically Rabbit just somehow managed to cut onto the right with the actual minecart. But, I think there's going to be a slight difference to the mix, because I think after this particular scene right here, I think something tells me something will actually brings us something different, where Rabbit drops off by the minecart, and somehow he realizes his carrots are still on the minecart, and believe it or not, we come across into a talking door icon, so meaning he now appears in the actual rail carts, or rail tracks, as far as I meant to say. Again, it's a little bit different compared to the forms of how it does it on the console version, so... Yeah, I guess it's that. So, and I think, truth be told, I think this might actually be the final time, at least if I'm assuming so anyway, to able to actually see the talking door on not only for the entire Piglet's Big Game Let's Play-wise, but also on the Game Boy Advance version of Piglet's Big Game itself. So, either way, chances are we need to head back all the way up, so... Yeah, we can soon leave. We were able to actually just to try to deal with him for the final time anyway. Even though despite the fact that he did say my carrots for rabbit anyway. Basically though, I didn't actually see the carrots on the minecarts. But again, because of the Game Boy Advance's limitations, which I don't usually try to able to say like, don't judge a book by its cover or something. So either way, yeah, we've meet up with rabbit again. So yeah. Obviously, now the talking door just now shows up. You again? Well, yes, indeed. I am back. Especially, I can able to get rid of you for, let's just say, the fifth time so far in terms of our channel. So, either way, of course, since we've learned the brave face from a couple of moments ago. So, either way, let's try and go ahead and take him down for about three uh, buzzing combinations. And there goes the talking door. And let's grab this little potion, and there goes this last scream, and straight to the point, we go inside, and I think something tells me we will come across into, what else? Sporty Warzels right here. So, either way though, I'm pretty sure that it just didn't do anything. Well, at least aside from the fact that, well, I'm pretty sure that there's only like, I don't know actually, because I know for a fact that this is all new to me for this version, so... Anyway, so let's just uh, look around a little bit, so just in case if I uh, missed anything else for... Oh, okay. So we come across into... Well, for some reason, the actual color scheme of Sporty Walsall just looks way, way different. And was that it? That's only two of them. Gee. Jeez, man. Almost first thought that in the uh, Rouge Dream, they come across into like three enemies on that particular point, but oh well. Piglet may ha may be very small, but he proved that being clever was the best way to help his friend, Rabbit. At least I guess that works during that first glance. So, either way, fourth dream is done, and the final level has been unlocked, and of course the password feature exists. So, with that being said, we got the endings of this point right here. So, join me next time for more of Let's Play of Piglet's Big Game for the Game Boy Bands. I think I'm also able to try to do uh, Bravest of the Mall challenges or something like that. Or if not, then I'm also able to go into Flooded Woods to uh, take care of this game. So I'll see you guys until on Tuesday. Later, fellas.